zero to be. Learning better is better. Welcome. So this is actually our last, last, last video on this book, the HTML5 Graphing and Data Visualization Cookbook. I am Ben Fowley, your host and also the guy that wrote the book. And we're talking about the appendix, which is actually free. You can get it on our website at zerotogeek.com um, as a free PDF download. And you can get also the source files for free. You don't even have to be a member on our site. You could enjoy all of the past 10 videos, their actual content. You could jump right into them and play with them. Um, let's talk about what is about, what is picking your graphic technology, which is originally was planned to be this introduction chapter in the book, but because our book became so big, we had to cut something out, and this unfortunately had to get cut out of the book, but fortunately for us, we could offer it out for free for our members and anyone else that, our book readers or anyone else that wants to get it. And really what it is, is just a very simple overview of a few different technologies that are available in the HTML5 world, from SVG, CSS transitions, CSS tran transforms, CSS timelines, and an intro, a very, very basic intro to op OpenGL, um, WebGL, which is the th 3D version of our canvas. We worked in 2D for throughout the last 10 chapters. Um, we had hints of a 2D, 3D kind of like um, mesh up, but it was really always 2D. Um, and that really covers it. There's not much more that I could say about it. This is, I just want to show it. So I'm going to show it quickly. There's no homework or assignment. It's really, the idea of it is also to show you. So although the web was all about flash until just about two, three years ago, now the web is a lot more than that. Now we try to use JavaScript wherever we can. Um, we try to use canvas. We try to use HTML the more that we can. And there's some places that we still want to use Flash if we want to create a very rich experience that is easier to develop. But with that said, there's a lot of great, great alternatives today to Flash in the HTML5 world. And obviously our book explored how we could use basically JavaScript to create our graphics and how we don't need to use Flash for that anymore. So let's uh, just quickly just say that we're now in the browser itself. You could find your source files on the page of our book itself. To find it, just Google Zero to Geek or come to our site, zerotogeek.com. Click on the book section and find our HTML graphing and data visualization cookbook. And I'm sure if you would just search for Zero to Geek HTML5 graphing, you'd probably end up on this page. And on this page, you'll find both the appendix and the source files. Currently, it's not there yet because we're doing this recording while we're still in the midst of a redesign of the website. Um, so let's start going into the examples themselves. Now, not all browsers currently, you know, right now I'm doing this recording on November 16th, 2012. Not all browsers fully support HTML5. I'm inside of a Mac. It's There's partial support. So first of all, our um, SVG example in our Firefox is working in, well, this is Safari, and Safari is working quite well. Um, if I jump into my... Um, into my uh, little, little, little Firefox and I refresh this, we'll see the transformations. So we'll see how all these transformations are done via CSS. Um, let's take a peek also at a few other CSS examples that we have here. So a few animations that are done all via CSS as well. Um, we have also a few transform... Oh, it's actually not all done in via CSS. There's a little bit of JavaScript here, but the JavaScript doesn't do any of the animations. Really, the JavaScript and this one just picks what is going to be animating. And the actual animations are done via CSS itself through CSS properties. And we'll see we see that in the chap in the appendix, which is actually free, so you could just download it and play with it. And we also have a timeline animation where we could see this timeline animation, which by the way doesn't work on every single browser, it only works on browsers that actually support it. So that's part of those issues of this moving into this HTML5 world that sometimes not everything works. Um, and it works only on specific browsers and you have to kind of make sure that you check and, and, and confirm where something works and where something doesn't work. So there's no real um, extra overview beyond this overview that we've talked about. Um, literally, there's no assignment. The whole idea is just to get you more familiar with the environment that's there. Hopefully by the time you're reading this book, maybe it's three, four months later and the, there's greater support. But obviously, 
it, this is a matter of a transition that takes a little bit of time, which is probably going to take a couple of years before we could fully say that um, all browsers support everything. But end of the day, you have to know what technology you're trying to focus on and who are your users and what browsers do they have. Because end of the day, if your browsers have, if your users have Internet Explorer 6, IE6, 7, 8, and they don't have the latest browsers, then obviously HTML5 is not your solution yet. On the other hand, if you're building a mobile application that's going to be working on your iPhone and Android and so on and so forth, then you're probably in a good position to be building an HTML5 in general at this date in 2012. Obviously, this answer is going to change every single month depending on technology and depending mainly on your statistics of users and who they are. Um, and that covers it. So I really thank you for joining me in this book. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed writing it, and I do hope that you will enjoy it as well. Um, and I guess... Well, like what we did here by buying the book, giving it to your friend, um, liking us, sharing the book, um, clicking on the subscribe button so you can see more stuff that we do. So this book is over, but we'll be picking another book and we'll be exploring that book in depth um, in the next in next week's date. So hopefully I'll see you next Wednesday. If you're looking for the subscribe button, you'll find it on the top left corner. Zero to Geek. Learning better is better.